Ladies and gentlemen, right off the bat, I do not believe in politicians. I don't give a damn about no left and right, Democrat, Republican. I chuckle at the fact that trolls come and talk about, I'm a Democrat. You going to come to my damn page and tell me what the hell I am. You know, <laughs> if you don't get your behinds out of here, I don't like any politician because neither side has showed enough results for me to even like them. They haven't. So recently, ladies and gentlemen, you have Mitch McConnell making the same tired ass remarks we have been hearing forever. You know, if they say one thing that's different, I think I would fall over and die. Seriously. But I'm just amazed that they think the usual talking points are effective and they are very ineffective and never have been effective. And this is why these conversations go on. So we're going to get into Cory Booker and Mitch McConnell. So let's first touch on Cory Booker. Let's go back to when he first announced his run for the presidency a few months ago. And he was invited on The Breakfast Club. And if you remember when the subject of reparations came up, he laughed. He didn't even take it seriously. Now, Cory Booker has come up with his own version of H.R. 40. And, you know, he already knows it, it's a far stretch for it to pass. But this is what he came up with anyway. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you this. If somebody was against reparations and they have shifted and now claimed they're for reparations, would you trust any bill from them? I sure wouldn't. I know whatever bill he introduced will never go far enough. And at this point, there's no other way of looking at this gesture other than pandering. That's all. I don't see anything beyond that. So now he wants to tough all, talk all tough about reparations when we know Cory Booker in his entire political career does not have a history of doing that. So he's not fooling anybody. So U.S. Senator Cory Booker, Democrat, New Jersey, one of the three African-Americans in the U.S. Senate, is expected to argue Wednesday, which he did speak at H.R. 40 meeting that was on C-SPAN. If you um, didn't catch it, I'm actually going to do a video or maybe even a hangout to critique it. I think it's worth talking about. I don't like the bill. But since it is concerning reparations, and that is the topic that we're on, I will critique it for you, and I will give my opinions on what I think. Okay, so um, he did speak before the committee on uh, the racism and white supremacy that tainted the nation's foundings, and according to his remarks, prepared for the schedule, which he already spoke. And, you know, I agree with him, but I don't trust Cory Booker. I just can't trust somebody that came out against reparations and then suddenly changed course. And now he's on it, you know, because I know there is a motive behind it. And that motive, that motive will never benefit us, ladies and gentlemen. It will benefit him more than anyone else. You know, that's what you got to ask yourself. Who is going to benefit this shift more? the African-American community or Cory Booker. And it's definitely Cory Booker. You know, I am just so frustrated with these politicians. It's not even funny. Now you got Beto O'Rourke, who as another one was against reparations. And then he shifted over and said he's for reparations. And now he's trying to say white people don't know enough about slavery. <laughs> yeah, right. OK, they know enough about slavery to come here and oppose it. OK, <laughs> they know enough to do that. So I don't want to hear nothing about their ignorance at this point. Don't want to hear it. So 
Corey's latest quote, as a nation, we have yet to truly acknowledge and grapple with the racism and white supremacy that tainted this nation's foundings. Well, how convenient, Corey. So many of you might have heard what Mitch McConnell said, which I could just blow all kinds of holes into <laughs> Mitch McConnell and the people that say these kind of things, it's so easy, it's not even funny. So Mitch McConnell decided to run his mouth about reparations. So during a press conference on Tuesday, he said, I don't think reparations is something that happened 150 years ago, whom none of us currently living are responsible is a good idea. Okay, let's stop right there. Ladies and gentlemen, America gives Israel reparations in its foreign incident that did not take place on US soil. And many of the offspring were not in concentration camps. Many of the offspring are still collecting reparation money on a yearly basis being that chattel slavery happened on American soil and not the Holocaust, I would think we would be more entitled to that money than they would be. So if I'm going according to what you just said, Mitch McConnell, then there is no justifiable reason why they should be having all of this reparation money for something that didn't even happen here. And their offspring were not alive, were even alive back then. They weren't alive. Okay, now let's move to the Native Indians, y'all. None of the living descendants of those Native Americans that were slaughtered are living today, but they have received several reparations in this country. None of the people that are alive today or lying in a mass grave, Mitch McConnell. Okay, let's be honest here. Your refusal to give reparation to us is straight up racism and for no other reason. We've tried to deal with our original sin of slavery. How? He brought up the Civil War. Well, Mitch McConnell, black men fought on both sides of the Civil War. We fought on the Confederate side. And, and ladies and gentlemen, that word Confederate, they ripped it off from the Bible. That's where it originally came from. That's where they got it from. It came straight up from the Bible and they stole it out of there. And the Union. So Black men fought on both sides. So they are the only ones on the behalf of the Black community that can get credit for that, as far as I'm concerned. They fought on both sides. So you can't phrase this as if whites fought this war and it was one way to rectify slavery. You didn't. In fact, your beloved General Lee was the biggest kidnapper of Black men to fight on the side of the Confederate. He kidnapped more black men to fight for the Confederacy than any other general. So when you bring up the Civil War, white people didn't fight that war by yourself. You didn't fight any war by yourself. So you can't pat yourself on the back and said, fighting for the Civil War and exclude the black men that fought on both sides. It just simply won't work. By passing landmark civil rights, yes, you sure did. And then after civil rights was passed, you spent the rest of that time sabotaging the Black community through redlining, poor education, police brutality, mass incarceration, the crack epidemic that this government started in the Black community, and a whole host of things. So, and we elected an African-American president. Not really. President 
Barack Obama, former President Barack Obama, was not a descendant of slaves. So yes, he had a Jewish mother and a black Kenyan father, but he was not the descendant of slaves. So no, you can't use Barack Obama as your tool to say, oh, well, we made up for it because you had this president, a president that does not have the same background as the offspring of the chattel slaves. Nice try, Mitch McConnell, but it doesn't fly. Ladies and gentlemen, I think, you know, Mitch McConnell talking points are the same ones we have been hearing for a long time. And it just doesn't justify nothing. They just can't seem to find the right wording to justify not giving us the reparations. Ladies and gentlemen, I listened to the hearing today. And it brought out a lot of things. And, and there are certain parts of it that we definitely must cover. So just be on the lookout for my critique of it and a hangout. I haven't done a hangout in a while and I really need to do one um, real soon. And I think this is the perfect topic to cover for the hangout. I'm glad I got to witness what I saw today in that meeting. Of course, it doesn't go far enough, but it lets us know how many of these folks feel. And it lets us know because we got to listen to these things, even if we don't agree with it, ladies and gentlemen, because these are the lawmakers in this country. And if you're going to get anything, they are more than likely going to be involved. So no, do I like it? No, but I know it's something that we must listen to because it's concerning us. So just to end this, the divisive issue has gained traction in recent months. We don't care about reparations being divisive. You know, I know you're trying to find the right thing to shut us up. We have never been united, so we're not worried about being divisive. You, you don't understand. Those words mean nothing to us because our whole life has been filled with divisions in America. So you throwing up the word divisive, I, I, I feel nothing, okay? I feel nothing when you say it. I feel nothing when you repeat it. And you can say it until now, until you go to your grave, I will feel nothing. Our whole life has been divisive. So what's one more thing? It's the norm. Please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.